Hey, what's going on everybody? Today, we're gonna take a little bit of a look at Unify's latest update, and that is Network version nine. So I kind of dug myself into a little bit of a hole when I made that video, um, Everything Wrong with the UDM Pro, where I listed off a whole bunch of things I didn't like about it that weren't supported or were clunky or whatnot. And here we are really not too much later and a lot of my gripes with it have been solved. I even put out another video, which was basically saying that things were getting better, where I went over all of my complaints that I had laid out against the UDM Pro and said what was fixed and what wasn't. Well, here with the new Network 9 patch, there's another one that has been checked off my list, and that is zone-based firewalls. But let's just take a look at the patch notes. There's already been all kinds of... Uh, videos made on this um, talking about all of the changes but I just wanted to go in here myself say this was on my list of things I wanted zone based firewalls 100% I'm on board with it I've played around a little bit with it on other equipment but in this video I'm actually going to convert my home network into the zone based so let's see if we don't bring absolutely everything down when I enable it hopefully that doesn't happen but we will see so Here's the Network 9.0 kind of uh, announcement. And first up is the zone-based firewall rules. Again, this is like, got me crazy excited because this is something I've wanted with Unify for a very long time. It is very, very painful for me to manage my firewall rules in the current state that they are. So this zone-based should make everything a ton better and just easier in general. So. That's the biggest change for me. And then another change is what's called Unify Cybersecure. Basically, this is a paid service that gets you more threat signatures, more insight. It's kind of like a managed security service. You've got dynamically updated signature lists that are probably um, looked at a lot more thoroughly than the free signatures that you get with the device. Um, I kind of liken this to maybe something like sentinel one or the sonic walls um, ips signatures where it's actually like actively managed and updated and the device gets all the updates so you're pretty much always at the cutting edge of threats so it'll kind of lessen the likelihood that you'll get a zero day because there's a lot more signatures and they're updated a lot more frequently however the downside is cost a hundred dollars a year for the regular one and then the enterprise is five hundred dollars a year so no, it is not a free service. No, it's not just something you automatically get. It is a subscription service, which I think is pretty awesome for the business and enterprise world, especially since they're moving a lot more in that direction. But that's not something that I'm personally going to care about for my home network. And the other changes were that SD-WAN, SiteMagic, it's now scaled to a thousand sites. I forget what the limit was on that before. I only have one UDM Pro. I have not dealt with Site Magic really in any capacity, so this isn't something that I'm looking closely at. I'm still running the IPsec site to site VPNs and whatnot because all of my other managed clients are running edge routers or some other brand of equipment. I don't have two UDM Pros to really VPN together. And then lastly is the network API. I actually didn't know this wasn't a thing already, although I guess it makes sense. Um, again, I'm not gonna be looking too deeply at this, but I am kind of curious as what other tools will come out of this from maybe some third parties that can have a lot tighter integration with Unify. So this is probably the second most exciting to me, just because it's probably gonna bring about some other stuff that I can play around with. but. Site magic and cybersecurity, I could care less about. Zone based firewalls, I am absolutely excited and here for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to enable it. And the title of this video is probably going to be something like new features or something like that, but really this is a uh, zone based firewall setup tutorial. So don't let the title fool you. I'm sure that I named it wrong for what it actually is. But we can see on my Unify Dream Machine, I have network application, it is up to date version 9.0 and when you update to 9.0 you get a couple little pop-ups in other areas of the interface so if we go to security where we would normally configure our firewall rules we have this thing at the top that says upgrade to the new zone based firewall click to upgrade and if we go to protection we have upgrade to cyber secure by proof point if we click on that we get a pop-up saying it's a hundred dollars a year and then we can activate it so 
for my firewall rules. What I'm going to do first, because I am paranoid, is go to my system settings and backup, and I'm just gonna download uh, the configuration file. And I'm gonna download the last backup, which was on uh, the 31st. Go ahead and download that. This is just in case I completely blow up connectivity by enabling zone-based firewall, because I have a lot of existing firewall rules like a stupid amount for a home network, and this hurts my brain looking at it. So when I enable this, hopefully it kind of translates a lot of that over, and I can just kind of clean it up from there, but I don't know if this is gonna just start me from scratch or not. I'm gonna go ahead and click to upgrade. It tells me about how awesome zone-based firewalls are, I already know that. It says all existing networks will be migrated to the internal zone. Okay, all right. So anything I already have configured is gonna go to the internal zone, cool. Certain firewall rules might be migrated to multiple policies. I could see that happening. Pre-migration backup will be automatically created and can be restored. Okay, so I guess I didn't need to back up my configuration manually. And then use the external destination zone for matching OSPF BGP learned routes, except for IPsec. Uh, what's that mean? I guess that's just telling me that the external destination zone is for protocols like that, but not for IPsec. Well, all right then, let's go ahead and upgrade. So it looks like I didn't lose connectivity, that's a good sign. And if I scroll down, now I have this awesome little table here. And then below that I have all of my existing rules, it looks like. So let's just see kind of what they were converted to. So data center allow DNS. Okay, I see what it meant by creating multiple rules, because before this one was to allow DNS from basically any source into the data center network. So since there's multiple zones now, it made four different rules for this, and that's for the hotspot, the external, the VPN, and the internal zones. So same thing with the allow homepage data. Anything that I had set up as coming from any uh, source network going to a specific network, it's going to create multiple rules for all of the zones to match that expected performance. So there's going to be a lot to clean up. Obviously, I've got 284 records here that it has created. Most of them probably are quadrupled because of that reason. I'm just doing a ping here to something that I know is an internal network from this test machine that shouldn't be accessible, and it looks like it isn't. So this video probably isn't going to be a full-on tutorial on cleaning up my firewall rules because this will probably take hours. So rather than do that, I'm just gonna add some new zones and get everything ready to start uh, migrating. So what I originally wanted was basically each of these networks on its own zone. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, plus four different networks. So 11 different networks. They should really all be their own zone, but I have like data center, that's for all of my internal services stuff hosted on a server that I only use within my own network. Internet of Things, self-explanatory, light bulbs, whatnot. Security, that's for my security cameras. Data Center Public is anything that I host publicly and is not just used within my internal network. Management, self-explanatory, all of my access points, switch interfaces, they're all managed on the management network. Uh, December Waters is my wireless. And then I've got ER4 Transport, which is for all my VPNs using an edge router, Rugrats, that's my kids network, and then public is basically strictly um, publicly hosted things that I have that really aren't for me necessarily, but they're publicly available. And then office is kind of a secondary management network that's just for my office devices that has access to everything. So most of these need to be on their own zone because they accomplish different things. Like for example, my office network needs to be able to talk to all other networks, but no other networks need to directly talk into my office. My wireless network just needs to be able to access internal services on the data center network, services that are on the public networks, and nothing else. So this is why I wanted zone-based firewalls, and we're gonna go ahead and just start creating zones. So we're gonna call this one data center, and we're going to select data center network as the interface. Now. Actually, let's start with something other than a critical network because I wonder if it's going to throw this. I'm, oh, well, actually, I'm sure it is. It's probably going to throw this out of the internal zone and into wherever I throw it. And I don't know if that's going to mess with the rules or not. So let's just start with security. Why not? So we'll assign that there. Add the entry, and we have this little 
thing. It says, please proceed with caution. View the policies applied to this zone to ensure traffic from devices is not accidentally blocked. This will also pause eight firewall policies. Okay, let's proceed and let's see what that did. So security is no longer listed under our internal zone. It's now its own zone. And we can follow this chart to see kind of what it has access to. So from security, this everything on the left is your source zones. Everything on the top is your destination zones. So security to internal, there are two policies. If we click on that, we can see both of them. And it looks like both of these are default and that's isolated networks and block all traffic. So from security to internal, looks like everything is blocked. And that's mm, basically how I want it. And then security to external, looks like it's the same thing, except for that all traffic is allowed because that's the internet, so it's allowed to get out there. And then security to gateway is allowed all because obviously the security needs to talk to its own gateway. Security to VPN, block all. Yep, that is correct. Security to hotspot, looks like that's all blocked. I am a little bit confused as to why some of these are like block all, others just says view policies and there's two, but it's block all. I think it's because security was put on isolated network and this is technically like a carryover rule. I think that's why these are showing that there's multiple policies for accomplishing exactly the same thing. But DMZ, block, block, security to security is block, block. This is one that I did notice last time I was messing around with it. It's weird that the its own zone, security to security, is all blocked. And it seems to be like this for every zone. Like DMZ to DMZ is blocked all. Hotspot to hotspot. Um, it has one allow custom DNS, but everything else is blocked. Now VPN to VPN is allow all. Gateway just doesn't have anything. External to external is only allowing return traffic. And internal to internal, well, that has all my custom rules in it, which I can see all my paused rules here now that I'm looking. Here's this match network is no longer present because this was security to office. So it looks like we did kind of just bork the security network just a little bit by throwing it in its own zone. But one little critique that I do kind of have is I wish there was a drop down here for like block all or allow all because like I kind of like seeing these green things it's like all right well VPN to my security network what is that go over here block all okay nothing is allowed that's nice it's a little weird seeing like okay VPN to internal view policy oh there's 44 policies all right now what like what if I didn't want very specific rules under it I do understand why it's like this and it it works well but if I wanted it simplified like if I wanted internal to DMZ to just be block all. I, I would love a little drop down here that's just like, oh, block all or allow all. That's a very, very tiny nitpick. I'm not trying to find things wrong with zone-based firewall on Unify because just having it is awesome. But let's see if we can un-mess up the security zone. So right now we've got the policies that blocks everything, which is for isolated networks and block all traffic. So if I just uncheck that and look for the rules that are paused. So this first one, Data center allow wise proxy. What was this? So anything from the source zone internal, which it's internal now because it actually has a zone, but before it was from my data center network, or sorry, my security network, going to my data center network for 251, which is, or was my wise proxy. This actually doesn't exist anymore, but I'm just gonna take a look at how I would rebuild this rule. So this was for all, everything, always, but between my security network and the WISE proxy. So how I would rebuild that, I'm just gonna copy this IP because I'll probably forget it. Let's go back up to our list and take a look at security to internal, which this would basically just be a workaround rule because data center is gonna be its own zone itself. But if we create policy, We'll say allow wise proxy and the source zone is going to be security and anything within security we're going to allow to the destination zone of internal but only to a specific IP which would be 10.88.88.251. We'll go ahead and add that and we're not going to match opposite. Um, we could do a specific port. I do not remember the specific port but this doesn't exist anymore anyway so we'll just say it was a web server. We'll match HTTPS and we'll change that from all to TCP UDP and the connection state could be all or just return traffic. 
Now, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do here. My mind is drawing a blank on how I would want to do this because I like using the established related rule to basically say that there's one-way communication uh, between these networks. But for some reason at the moment, I'm comprehending whether or not that's from destination to source or source to destination. So I'm just going to leave that on all, I guess. There's really no way to test this because that server doesn't exist. But we'll go ahead and add that as a policy. And now we have our allow wise proxy from our security zone. So all of our cameras, which would be any source IP address, any camera IP, any source port to our internal zone with a single IP destination and port 443. I wonder if it looks any different if I change this to return traffic only. Uh, it does not. So actually what I would probably need to do, I think, I think my brain just kicked on, will allow the connection state of all uh, for this one, but then we would create a separate policy that's from the source zone internal to security. And this would be for the IP of the wise proxy. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then the specific port, which would be HTTPS for our web traffic. We're going to allow it to the destination zone security to anywhere, but we're only going to match return traffic. So add that policy. Was there something I missed? Oh, I have to give it a name. So allow wise establish related, go ahead and add that. And as I'm working through this, I'm remembering more things. I probably should just make a blanket rule for established related to, uh, to that network. And I actually don't see that new rule popping up. So did, did I do something wrong? Maybe it's because of that. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, I've got a lot of work to do kind of unraveling this web of firewall rules, but in the end, it's going to make way more sense and it's going to be way easier for me to manage. I wish this was here from the get go. So I could have set all this up from scratch, but I'm gonna have to go through all these rules and get them set up. But anyways, just wanted to put this video out saying that there's yet another feature that I had a big problem with that's been fixed by a recent Unify patch. It was a pretty big one. And I wanted to show you just a little bit of what it looked like. So hopefully you learned a little bit of something from this and as always happy networking.